must have sleep. Can you pay? Yes, of course I can pay, dear boy. You're talking to a genius. I w I forgot my wallet. A genius, huh? Come back in the morning. No, I'll pay for the best room you've got. What are you going to pay with? Scientific notations? That's rather smug talk for someone I could vaporize with a mere act of concentration. We already have a doctor here, and he may have killed somebody. So... So? So what? I brought someone to life. Let me in. Give me one night's sleep in a warm bed with no disturbances. I'll resurrect the dead. Just one night? Yes. That'll be eight dollars. Did anyone ever tell you that you look like a stuffed bird? No, no one ever has. Doctor, what are you doing in the house? Uh, nothing. Just admiring that peach pie. Well, help yourself. Thank you. Oh, it's really storming out there. I swear I saw a piece of Dorothy's house whizzing by. I sought refuge in your cellar. Oh, Detective, this is Dr. Frankenstein. Pleased to meet you. Sorry, my hands are wet. Norman, hmm? where's a good place to hang my hat to dry? Well, the kitchen. It's got a heater. Great. Excuse me, gentlemen. For the last time, you cannot stay here unless you pay. But look out there, listen. The thunder is literally so loud it's making my eyebrows hurt. What do I look like to you? I don't give out free rooms. I've got a sick mother to take care of. Hey, you. Who, me? Yes, you. What do you have to do to get a decent night rest around here? I paid him eight dollars and he showed me to my room. Room 12. What's your name? Dr. Einstein. Einstein? The genius? Oh my god. Oh my god, do I look alright? Oh my god, it's really you? I've been a fan of E equals MC squared since... a long time ago. What? Oh, let me shake your hand. You know I've been out of scientific ideas, completely out, zip. I'm a nervous wreck. Look, my hands are shaking. You're shaking his hand. Oh. I've given it to you, it's getting worse. I must get sleep. Well, good night. No, 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 no. We must talk. You must tell me everything about your work. Must I? I have to set down these pies. So, are you here to photograph an eclipse? Please, come it's in. It's a terrible night for it. The cloud cover's terrific. Stay a while. Mr. Bates. Yeah? I think I would like to have a word with your mother. Has anyone been upstairs to see her tonight? No, I don't allow people upstairs. Well, my mother Norma, she's sick. Um, been sick for a while now, and I, I don't let people go up and see her. I understand, but this is rather important. I saw her in her bedroom window when I arrived. She could have spotted something we missed. May I? Listen, uh, I understand your situation and all, but there's no way I, that I can have her disturbed. Anything you need, you can ask me, all right? Of course. Thank you. All right. Okay. I'll be in the kitchen. If you need me. Of course. Ah, I thought he'd never leave. Just as I was about to climb the stairs, there came a knock. What now? I'll get it, I called. Poor Norman had put up with quite a few strange strangers tonight. What is it? Trick or treat! That doesn't help me. Well, it's not supposed to help you, it's supposed to help me. Uh, now, you got any candy or not? What's going on here? Norman made an appearance from the kitchen, with Dr. Frankenstein and Dr. Einstein hot on his heels. It's two days before Halloween. What are you doing here? Well, I go around the neighborhood and ask for free candy before the holiday. Please don't tell my parents. We won't tell your parents. Thank you. Okay, but anyway, if you didn't have any candy for me, why do you have your lights on so late? And why are you dressed up like Charlie Chaplin? Really? Is it late? Yeah, it's like 11.45. Dear God. And it's not like I'm the only one. I saw a short... Just then, Dr. The Einstein spoke up. Too, Listen, buddy. Beat it. The village called. They want their idiot back. You saw two men. Where did they go? In your cellar. What time? Before nine? Before nine? Yeah, jeez. What's the big deal? Get in here. Hey, watch it. This suit has been pressed. Everyone shut up and don't move. Listen, are you going to give me some candy or not? Because if you're not, I'm just going to have to toilet paper your yard. I'm just going to have to call your house 57 times. I'm just going to have to throw eggs at your house. I'm oh, just... God, fine. Does anyone have anything? I have a Snickers bar, but I need it. I get hypoglycemic. Well, have a slice of pie. No, stop. No one is to touch that pie. Just then, Bernard Black stumbled in. It was fortunate. What I had was for his ears as well. So, who's making tea? If you'll all allow me to indulge in a line of reasoning, I would be very grateful. This whole episode started 15 minutes before Mr. Einstein here checked into room 12. As our young friend here tells me, he was on your property poking about with a tall man at approximately 8.45 tonight. Both men hid in your cellar, away from the rain as I did. 
the same cellar that you, Norman, forgot to lock in your haste to bake that delicious peach pie of yours. A pie made with canned peaches, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I found some muddy footprints when I was down there. But they could have been anybody's. We were all in and out of here tonight. And I'm looking at no one in particular now, Bernard. But I did find similar muddy footprints on your stairs here. Also some drag marks. And you say that no one has been upstairs to see your mother tonight. Not even you? No. From the drag marks, it is clear that one of the men that visited your house tonight was not always given the luxury of walking. And I think you can find him upstairs this very minute. But who is he, Norman? You say you were outside flipping the motel sign on when you heard a terrible scream. And this was after you checked Mr. Einstein in, correct? That's right. After you checked Mr. Einstein in, he went back to your cellar. Obviously, the rain made you deaf and blind to prowlers, so you could not tell the location of the scream. When you came inside the house to phone me at 9.30, your resident in room 12 took that opportunity to take this tall man, as we shall call him for now, up to your mother's bedroom. But mother... I thought I told everyone to shut up. Now, how am I so sure there were two men? And how am I so sure that Dr. Einstein was one of them? Well, whatever he may have done to his partner tonight, he does seem to hold a remarkable capacity for amends. In fact, when I went into the kitchen to hang up my hat, I spied none other than Dr. Einstein cutting not one, but two slices of pie. And if my eyes don't fail me, he tried to take them upstairs, upstairs to where he hid the body. I did it. I'm the one. I rearranged his face. Oh, yeah. Oh, why did you do it? He was asking for it. It's a simple procedure. So, come on, who's making Not tea? Not now, Bernard. Google eyes. What's going on? I want my flask back. Your flask? Yes, I gave it to him. Mr. Black and I have, should we call it, an understanding? But not anymore. What sort of understanding? Oh, that. Well, I went upstairs looking for Bruce, as you know. Uh, I saw this tall creepy guy lying on the bed. His name was Jonathan Brewster. Uh, Google Eyes here told me that he was a felon escaping the law, and he does the surgeries, you know, on the tall guy's face, so that the cops can't recognize him. That's what they were doing in your basement, starting the surgery. But they had to move um, to the house after Jonathan screamed to avoid suspicion. You know, uh, Norman, your mother must be really sick. Uh, she doesn't say much. What? So, you were trying to perform a surgery on this Jonathan fellow, this criminal. That's right. And he should be awake any minute. Uh, but listen, I'm afraid I may have botched it again. You all didn't give me much time. It doesn't look so nice when he first wakes up. Like a monster. So nobody say anything, all right? I have a reputation to think of. Yes, and what a shining reputation it is. But I still don't understand. Why did he scream? Shh, she's coming. God, I need an aspirin. Who are all you nut jobs? Alive. It's alive. Good God. There was no murder after all. But wait, what about the scream I heard? What? Oh, yeah. My scream. Well, did you tell them, Dr. Einstein? No. Bungle Nose here dropped a pair of pliers, very sharp ones, on my toe. Just before putting me under anesthesia. That's why the scream stopped so abruptly. And you... With the umbrella. Who are you? Just your average detective. What are you detecting? Incompetence? I said I was sorry, Johnny. I'll deal with you later. I'm afraid no one will be dealing with anyone. The police should be here any minute. Wait! How did they know when to get here? Easy. I told them to arrive at midnight. That's my cue. Oh, and there are the red lights from the police van. Mr. Bates, it's been a pleasure. And coincidentally, I can see now why you gave these people the rooms farthest away from your office. They're all quite mad. Thank you, Detective. Are you sure you can't stay for pie? No, I'm afraid that is now evidence. Good night, all. I tipped my hat and left Bates Motel. I swept out the front door and walked to my car with my coat and umbrella, though the rain had now stopped. I still held a slight sinking feeling in my stomach, however. That old woman was still staring at my movements from the upstairs bedroom window, motionless. But like all shadows and suspicions that had made up that night, I knew that her and all the like would soon pass, disappear with the coming dawn like vaporous phantoms. But as I drove away, I noticed they did just that. Was it all a dream? Was Bates Motel a mirage? Were Dr. Frankenstein, Einstein, Jonathan, Bernard Black, and that trick-or-treater all in my imagination? No, it had all been quite real. But I had taken a hard left, floored the gas pedal, and was now on my way back down the winding road. And I could see the motel's house, and its phantoms, 
no more. The end.